Friends, not that I'm complaining, but the month of June 2017 has been unusually practical here at the old show. See, it started out great. We flew all the way to Spain, but to drive a baby buggy, a cool one, the new Volvo XC60, but still a baby buggy. Then we headed to one of the most stunning places on planet Earth, the Pacific Northwest, and the weather gods were with us to drive the number one selling car for the past 15 years in the U.S., a car you and I have never driven together uh, in the eight years of this show, the Toyota Camry, and found it was a lot better than we thought it would be. Uh, then to counteract that, uh, while we're still up there, we got another Toyota, but this one with two doors, three pedals, and a manual transmission. And while it was very cool, it was incredibly slow. So I think we need to, we need something very different. We need to like counteract all this practicality with something, there's no nice way to put this, we need something that just rips your face off. So with that, uh, toggle switch number one, uh, toggle switch number two, uh, toggle switch number three, and then I uh, will do this. Mr. Fertig, ich auch. <laughs> that is certainly no Toyota 86 or Subaru whatever. What was that saying you were sharing with me earlier this morning? Something about form? Yes. Form follows function. Now, uh, we did discuss this in the tech review, how some of the new form, well, there's some function to it, like the hood being 30% stronger or more downforce, less air getting underneath the car. Well, we also need to discuss the structure of it. Now, R35s have always been a menagerie of like steel, carbon fiber, and die cast aluminum. Like for example, the rear diffuser is carbon fiber, uh, the body panels mainly steel. However, there were two areas they focused on to increase the structural rigidity. The first bit is the A pillar, specifically around the windshield. That is now stiffer to increase the driving dynamics of the subframe in the front. That's, that's, that's what he was telling me. And then in the rear, the trunk opening, that's been the structural rigidity of that is now 5% stiffer to increase the driving dynamics of the rear track. I believe that's all the form that follows function. Was there anything else? Oh yes, the wheels still 20 inches and still made by race. Okay, I really feel it would be a waste of your time and mine to try to discuss whether this is fast or not. What we need to focus on is how much faster is it with an extra 20 horsepower or four pounds more of pulling power. Well, let's downshift here, come out of a turn. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's, this is just too much for these roads. It still puts a ridiculous grin on your face. One, your mother, girlfriend, or wife will definitely not understand. <laughs> I don't care what Nissan talks about refinement. It still makes weird noises that like speak to my very soul. Oh my God. It's, you know, we get lost with 991.2 turbos and new things that come out from Mercedes, AMG and BMW and we forget the goodness that has been around for eight years. Now just with more power even in the luxury model. So a little bit behind the scenes here, it is super hot right now and the bugs are eating us alive, which brings us to the topic of high temps. Uh, and that would be the exhaust. Now, if you saw our Nismo GTR episode that we shot in Nashville, what you don't know is that car I am very proud to say I'm the only person that got a Nismo GTR to literally fly. And then the car landed at some point and there were sparks. Why were there sparks, you ask? Well, uh, that car was fitted with a titanium exhaust. And when you land on uneven pavement and you hit the titanium exhaust, or at least scrape it just so, you get sparks. It was lovely. 
However, this one now is also fitted with a titanium exhaust. No, we did not make it fly, but we found out the reason why these things have titanium exhausts. Uh, number one, it lowers the weight by 12 pounds. Number two, it deals with high temperatures like we are dealing with today. Uh, and then number three, uh, this is now a little bit different than the one that's in the Nismo in that, um, well, you can make it quieter, but I showed you that in the tech review. Listen to that. Oh my God. Now, you know that, oh, love that. You know I like to get my absent-minded professor on here and there. And uh, this is one of these things that I just, I don't get. This is a 4,000 pound car. Let me show you something a 4,000 pound car should not do. You should be over there going this fast. I'm not gonna tell you how fast I'm going nice declining radius turn with an elevation change. Okay, Nissan still tells me about refinement, but it does everything the previous GTR did in this mode on roads like this. Okay, but let's slow down and unpack this, hit this button over here, and that's where we have an array of gauges. The one I want you to focus on is this. This is the piece that makes us understand what's going on between the front and the rear of the car. And we talked about this in the tech review. Remember how I said it doesn't just detect wheel spin, it detects five different pieces of input, and then it compares it against perfection that the Nissan engineers have programmed in. That target then is referred back to all of the bits to make the car go around corners to make you look like a rock star even if you put a foot wrong. Do me a favor, when you're done fooling around, can you put that in there for me? Thank you. Right. Here. Don't spend it all in one place. Okay, so let's put the crazy gauges aside focus on the refinement that Nissan keeps telling us about and do the unthinkable. Go to comfort mode. Ugh. Fully automatic and we're in comfort mode. Pushing around a turn here. Okay. All kidding aside, when we were in the R mode in my super double secret racetrack back there, there is virtually no lean, squat, dive, or roll in a 4,000 pound vehicle. But let's push this a little bit harder in comfort mode. Remember, this is for science. And the thing you notice is there is a bit of dive in the front when you push it a bit harder, and that's the weight. Because you don't have the crazy GTR systems that are counteracting the laws of physics. Now the laws of physics, they indeed apply. So you're getting a little bit of dive in the front when you push hard because the weight is more in the front. It's about 54, 56% of the weight of the car is in the front. If I push it a little bit harder, I do get some lean from side to side, but this is where we get into the Bilsteins and the natural tendency of this specific supplier where it's very composed. I would say it's like a good balance of compliant and composed. So Kumo wanted to share a bit of a global Nissan update with you. This is not just the purview of the GTR, but it will affect the GTR. So he called his contact over at Nissan and said, dude, what's going on with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration? It's been like 85 years. Uh, well, it turns out that Apple CarPlay is now integrated into the Murano and the Maxima, correct? Uh, but you cannot retrofit it like you can on a Hyundai. Uh, but his contact did share with him that both integrations are going to cascade throughout the Nissan lineup over the next couple of years. Now, we translate that into, like, the new Leaf, which I think we're going to see in September. That'll have Apple CarPlay and hopefully Android Auto. And then the next derivations or next revisions of Nissan models as they continue will then most likely benefit from Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, provided I'm reading between the lines correctly, right?
Okay, so back to GTRs. Isn't this a lovely shade of silver? And I'm not a silver guy, but this, they call it super silver. It's extra money and it's a lot, but it looks really cool, especially with the red amber. So a couple of notes. If you remember in previous episodes of the GTR, specifically that Nismo version we drove on the drag strip and my homemade autocross, I love that the paddles were attached to the steering column and not the steering wheel. Sadly, that has been changed. Now granted, the paddles do indeed work because I am one of the few people that loves this transmission even though it still makes clunky shifts that make all sorts of noises that uh, the female visitors in your car will not understand, which I love. This is one of the things I love about this car. I really would want the option to have those paddles back here, not here. I am in that camp. And then let's discuss the number of buttons because this whole interior has been changed. So what they've done is they've taken the number of buttons down from 27 to 11, mainly because of this unified controller. But as we discussed in the tech review, I like the fact that they've kept the redundant controls here, which make this significantly more usable than some of the other new UXs you and I have driven over recent months. Then there is one thing they did keep from previous GTRs, which we already played around with, and that is the different screens from Polyphony Digital, I believe that's what's called, the people who do uh, the PlayStation games, and you can scroll through five different screens now. I, I played with this too much, I must admit. I love this. Actually, my favorite is the screen for because you have the, all the small gauges. Granted, it's all over here. I think it would be lovely if this was duplicated as a head-up display. I think that's my only area of improvement that I would offer for this setup. But other than that, love the old school black and white gauges that have been rendered digitally. And of course, this would not be an episode of mine if I did not complain about the lack of a sunroof. Or at least like a fixed glass panel a la the Jaguar F-Type. I mean, come on, man gotta give me this. I have even threatened the folks at Nissan North America that I'm going to take a can opener to this thing before they get it back so I can demonstrate how nice the sunroof would be in this vehicle. As a matter of fact, think of this as a bonus question. Would you like a sunroof? And if so, would you like me to install the sunroof with my homemade tools? And then last but not least, this downshift here, the noise. Now I know we played around with this at the very beginning of the tech review, but this, this is in the opposite direction. So you know how we talk about the noise in the i8, how they pipe it in as well as many other cars nowadays, which includes Mercedes? Well, guess what? That has made it to the GTR. So let's downshift, really downshift. And it's amplified based on all sorts of different parameters. You've gotta be honest, I don't hear a huge difference from previous GTRs, because these haven't really been known as quiet vehicles. And that's a damn good thing. Frankly, I, I could have done without this, they call it an active sound enhancement. I'm always gotta come up with these marketing terms and lingo, but I could have done without it, because frankly, I was really good with GTR's own symphony of clutches and turbochargers and very rough gear changes. To me, that GTR symphony is, it's akin to that, like the cleanness that you get from Antonio Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Just Gojira style. What is it, like three, four days? Yeah, something like three, four days that he and I have been debating the changes with this thing. And yes, simply put, it is more refined. But he reminded me to share a story with you that really sums it all up. And this car, it turned up on my doorstep and I was very excited about it. So I took my girlfriend for a ride in it. And this, you know, it's not just a story. I challenge you to do the same thing. I try to explain to a woman who drives an Acura every day why I love this because it's imperfect, because the clutches make all the stupid noises, the engine is loud, and when it changes gears, it does it with a thunk. She thinks I'm crazy. But then I put it in like comfort mode, the suspension, and all of a sudden she's like, oh, this is actually very comfortable to drive in. And there it was, a GTR, Gojira, that your girlfriend can drive in. And not complain. So with that, I'm going to turn this around to you guys 
and we're going to leave you with a question. And what was the question? The question is this. Um, there's a lot of refinements here, which now make the car more relevant against the usual suspects like a 991.2 or even the new AMG GT. So our question to you is this, with all these menagerie of changes, does it make it more relevant that you would actually consider this over those cars or no? And why or why not? And most importantly, let me know what region of the world you hail from and also for good measure, what kind of car do you drive? Meaning something like this. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I wanna leave you with two things. Number one, he wants to make sure that you know to unsubscribe and then resubscribe, click the notifications, because YouTube has absolutely butchered the platform for YouTubers big and small, no matter the genre. And number two, we wanna leave you with a fun fact. And the fun fact is this, the big man here, he just turned 10 years old two days ago. So hopefully you can wish him a happy birthday. Until we see you next time, bis später.